So this is video two, showing one of the problems I was having was sometimes the sensors connect and sometimes they don't and they waste your time. So when you hook up a sensor, you hook it up, you turn it on, you open up your program, open up your program, it says connect. Let's see if we can connect. You connect, wow, that was so easy. That's what it reads right there, and that's what it reads right there. But the reason I wanted to do this, and I wanted to do it with this, uh, this was interfering with the software where it was boot looping and refrigerant loop again, and it was freezing me out where it freezed up my phone and this. So I turned off this gate so I could only use this. And this usually works sometimes, but then it does the thing where it doesn't connect. Um, so I connected it. I want to show you the difference between the replacement of your micron gauge. So we're drawing a vacuum through a refrigerant manifold, which if you want to test and you want to draw a deep vacuum, that is not the way to do it. But everybody wants fast, cheap, easy. So what do you think is going to happen? And I'm in a live place in a shop. There's a compressor that was just going on there. So the manifold, you don't want to normally draw a vacuum for you if you want true readings and good readings and deep readings. That's not the way to go. But the majority of people are going to do that. So I'm showing you this. I am taking a reading off the high side and I'm drawing vacuum on the low side. So it's at the complete opposite ends of two systems. So I have 1500 microns right here. This is the micron gauge reading at this point. You're getting the true vacuum of the system. Now, let's go all the way to the other side of the vacuum and follow it all the way down to here. I'm having roughly close to 10, five microns reading at the micron gauge right here. This is nowhere near the actual vacuum that's occurring inside the system. This is the actual vacuum occurring inside the system. 1400 microns. You are nowhere even near or close to where you need to be but yet this is well below 100 microns at this point right here this is why having a micron gauge in the system or at least at the gauges and you can turn it off right here and you could read it in the gauges but no testo 557s doesn't have the micron gauge inside the system so you can't read anything you have to revert to putting a T in, making another possible uh, vacuum leak. But on a good system, you wouldn't use this anyway. If you were really serious about drawing a vacuum on system, you would not use gauges. You'd use a straight hose and you would use one of these somewhere in the system, but you would not go through a set of, set of gauges. You would not have your micron meter located here or inside. You would not have your micron meter located in your gauge set. You would not have your micron liter meter located at your suction side with your hoses. You would put it somewhere far away in the system so you can get an actual reading of what truly is happening. This is the problem. And well, actually this is another problem um, with some of the systems where somebody puts a micron meter down here. Now after you isolate and you shut off, your system will balance out and your micron meter will raise. Like here, I just shut off the vacuum. So now the system is gonna stabilize between one side and the other side. And this will take a little while. As you can see, it's going up. This was in a, a body shop. This has PAG oil inside. And this oil is really high hydroscopic. And it's been a week since I did a recovery on this. And this is at one of those places that just takes hoses off and uh, you know leaves them dangle in the air, absorbing moisture. So there's not much I can do for this guy. He's, he's toast. Basically, there's so much moisture and contaminated in this. I'm not gonna do nothing with vacuum. So that was the most important thing I wanted to show. It just happened, this happened to glitch out on me and, and not connect up. So I was getting a little frustrated out here at the job. And uh, I switched over to something I know will always work. And that's about it.
we got uh 1600 microns there oh let's let's open it back up let's open back up the micron gauge or the vacuum to the system so we can start pulling back down again and there we go we're going back down okay now let's come over here we're at roughly 100 microns so we got 100 microns we have 1,600 microns. This is why you don't put micron gauges anywhere outside of the system. All right, see you guys later. And I always really like these things. This is actually one of the best meters. I've had all those other ones, uh, all the, the best and Oh, who the hell? Um, all those common names that you would get at parts warehouses, I had them all. This one turned out to be the best, and I'm keeping it, and I've owned three of them now, because somehow the other ones walked away, and um, I don't have them no more, because somebody else apparently liked them better than me, or, you know, I left them behind, and somebody didn't call me up and said, hey, you left your tool behind, and more went into the, somebody's pocket. But that's my fault. All right, guys, I'll see you later.